love. Perfect shot, man. This truly is a trophy. Not because of what it is, but for what we had to accomplish to get it. The pain train. I love it. You know how your heart rate is right now? This is what else pain's like. Now you gotta make a shot. Welcome to the Geared for the Outdoors podcast, brought to you by NUMA Outdoors. I'm your host and NUMA team member, Will Cooper. The Geared for the Outdoors podcast is dedicated to bow hunters and all those who love the outdoors. Our mission here is to bring you information from industry experts and veteran hunters that can help better prepare you for your next hunt. We understand that time in the outdoors is precious. That's why our goal is to bring you gear that is built to over-deliver, designed to outperform, and proven to outlast. To learn more, head to our website at numaoutdoors.com, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We appreciate y'all listening in, and we hope y'all enjoy. What's up, everybody? We're back for another episode, and today we've got a pretty special guest coming on board. We've got Mandy Thomas coming all the way from Florida to talk with us this morning, and we're going to talk about how she got into hunting. She's also involved with Black Rifle Coffee, and she's also a firefighter, correct? Correct. Well, Mandy, let's give the listeners like the 30,000-foot view of who you are. All right. Well, like you said, I'm a full-time firefighter in Florida. I'm also an Army veteran, um, but I got out like ages and ages ago. Um, I am an archer. I'm pretty much a wannabe hunter, so I've gone on a hunt. Um, Didn't bring anything back, but, you know, I am scheduled or I will schedule to go this year. And um, I'm on the board of the BRCC Fund, which is an in-house nonprofit that Black Rifle started up back in april so i just Sweet. yeah pretty much a wannabe how did you get involved with black rifle uh so i had previously volunteered with another nonprofit for mm-hmm. a couple of years and they saw you know my service and what we did for veterans and first responders and asked if i would like to come on board with black rifle And it just kind of took off. Like I really was just supposed to be on the board, um, not really knowing what that entails because it's the first time I've been asked to do that. And uh, I'm not one of those people that can sit back. Like I like to get my hands dirty and I love people. I love this company. So I'm just, you know, I just got a little more involved with the total archery challenges and and the fun. So that's a pretty cool job to have right there. And then how long have you been a firefighter? Three years. Three years? Okay, three mm-hmm. years. Now, when we were at Big Sky, we got to see a pretty cool f- uh, film of you uh, yes. that was done with Blood Origins. Tell us about that. Blood Origins got a hold of me through um, a mutual friend of ours. And mm-hmm. at that time, they were looking for a female veteran hunter. And so Robbie reached out to me and I said, you know, I think you got the wrong person because I've never hunted. Uh, I'm just an archer. And he was like, okay, well, this is perfect. What if we set you up on your first hunt and we document it? And um, it was pretty neat. And, and it's something that I'm extremely grateful for in that, you know, my first hunt really couldn't have been better case scenario. I'm at this, you know, gorgeous place with all of these people and the wealth of knowledge. Um, and I still came home empty handed, um, which sucks, but I learned a shit ton and it's yeah. not like, you know, I went out and tried to do it on my own. Cause I, um, I really want to do this community proud. So I was very lucky to be hooked up with blood origins and, um, I got way more out of it than I imagined even coming home empty. Mm-hmm. So is that, where you first started bow hunting or had you picked up a bow prior to blood origins? Well, I picked up a, a bow prior to, it started during COVID and uh, okay. you know, a, a couple of us started doing archery during COVID cause we d- couldn't do anything else. And mm-hmm. at the time I lived in an apartment and I would just go out to like this old field, which we called a dog park and just started shooting targets. And, um, really loved it and then was invited out to a total archery challenge and fell in love. And so at that time, you know, a lot of my friends had gotten into hunting and I just, 
I didn't think it was for me because I didn't grow up in a hunting family. I wasn't around it. Um, and then once I went, um, I caught the bug. So I'm ready to do it for real this season. You're hopelessly addicted now. Completely and utterly addicted. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk we're, right before we got started with this. You've got a hunt coming up with yeah, over in California. Tell me about that. <laughs> So not a hunt, but I was okay. invited by Chris Cook and she runs Cook Pigs. So mm -hmm. um, it's pretty much just, you know, we're learning how to process an animal, animal properly. We're going to learn how to cook a meal um, with some pretty amazing people within the community. Um, it, it's just supposed to be laid back. It's, it's just a bunch of chicks. Um, mm -hmm. It's called a Merc Camp, but we have a bunch of people that are well known within the community that are going to teach us how to do these things right, as well as yeah. have fun. Like apparently we're going to be shooting like, you know, water guns and and doing just a bunch of relaxing things. And then Chris and um, my friend Nicole and I, she also uh, works for Black Rifle. Um, yeah. We're, we're going to plan a an all female hunt as well as an archery event together. Sweet. That sounds yeah. pretty awesome. I yeah. love, I really love seeing what Black Rifle Coffee has been doing over the past, what was it, two years, I'd say. You, I've really seen them just diving into the hunting community, the archery community. Uh, there was a big event that y'all did right before the Texas TAC. What, y'all did something out there, right? Yeah. So it was the second annual veteran adaptive archery. Uh, challenge. And the, the great thing about that is the organization that I was a part of prior, we have a lot of wheelchair archers. Yeah. And there nowhere anywhere is there a place for them to do 3D archery. Mm -hmm. So Black Rifle on their ranch in San Antonio set up the first 3D um 3D shoot so they could get in their track chairs and no shit, they didn't, you know, they didn't have to be picked up and put anywhere. It's they used their track chairs and they got to shoot these 3D targets with everybody else. And the crazy yeah. thing is we have a girl, her name's Leah Cornell. She, mm -hmm. uh, Coriel, she is going to Tokyo. So she's a two-time Paralympian in archery that has never shot 3D targets until that time in San Antonio. So that's been cool for a black rifle to Serious. do. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. I've actually, uh, my prior life, I used to be a college track and field coach, and I've actually got a Paralympian athlete that's going to be competing there as well. Get out for what? Uh, he's a sprinter. Uh, he was born with a condition called arthrogryposis. So he had a, his name's Tanner Wright, and uh, he had an arm that didn't fully develop. And so he went to the Scottish Wright Hospital in Dallas, Fort Worth area, and they, Helped him out a lot as he was growing up. And so it's been really cool to see him compete and get to this level now. He's going to be at Tokyo here in a couple of weeks. And he actually wants to go back to that same hospital and help out the kids just like he was helped out growing up. Beautiful. That's what it's about. Paying it forward and finding purpose. It's, that can do a lot for a person. A hundred percent. And I think that's that's a good uh, segue because I, I really wanted to talk about how what Black Rifle is also doing and just what archery does for the veteran community. You know, I, I love being able to see that and just getting more and more people involved. Like, t tell me about that and um, what you've seen. I have fallen in love with this community. Um, the military and the fire service are a lot alike in that you build fellowship and bonds within, you know, each of your individual jobs, I guess, but it, th there's nothing like it that archery does. So it's, um, you just get to fellowship, you get to talk shit. Not only yeah. that, but the, the, <laughs> the, the yeah, it, dry firing your bow three times. I mean, <laughs> um, th the thing I love about it is it's therapeutic benefit. So even though we're all together in a group and we're all you know, firing off at the same target. It's that moment mm -hmm. between knocking your arrow and, you know, you hear foam or you, you, you hear it, you know, crash against a rock or whatever. It's a moment of peace, just where your mind completely blanks out. And for those, however many seconds, 
you know, it, it's like you're, you're finally at rest. Your body's at rest. Your mind is at rest, which a lot of, you know, veterans and first responders don't get because we're, we're always on, always yeah. on and it's exhausting. So to me, it's archery is the place where I find rest. And I think a lot of others can relate and say the same. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. It's, you know, just watching everybody's face light up at the black rifle tent or just watching everybody getting up on the course. Like it's, it's really refreshing. It's just really great to see. I was going to say everything that you see Black Rifle doing and the people that are involved is genuine. Mm -hmm. You know, social media is, it can be very hard to differentiate between realness and just for show. Everybody there is a hundred percent real, even behind the scenes. So it's something that um, I am drawn to because that's who I am. It's like, you know, what you see is what you get flaws yeah. and all, you know, F bombs mm-hmm. here and, you know, telling a little <laughs> bit about, you know, uh, the dark shit in my life. It's mm-hmm. everybody at Black Rifle is so happy to come to work and so happy to serve this community and everybody that shows up at the tent. So that's something that I'm extremely proud to be a part of. That's huge. That's awesome. Yeah, that's pretty dang awesome. Now, um, you said you were in the army for a little while, right? Yes. If you don't mind me asking, what did you do in the army? I was an interrogator and a Russian linguist. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, I, wow. That's pretty freaking, um, I guess it sounds pretty freaking badass. It was cool. Yeah. I didn't get it to, to do it for that long. Um, I actually was in country in Bagram and found mm-hmm. out I was pregnant there. Um, oh. I was only there for a few weeks mm-hmm. and it was right at the height of malaria season. And I had to take the meds and I, obviously that's extremely toxic to us as, you know, people, it would be extremely toxic to my baby. So I had to go home and, you know, but I was, I was able to do my job for a teeny bit there. Um, Yeah. So it was fun. That's cool. Now you have, is it a daughter? Correct. I have two daughters. Two daughters. Tell me what it's like to, what you're getting to do in the outdoor industry and with archery. I'm sure that your daughter's getting to see that's pretty kick-ass and just getting to lead by example. It, it's it's pretty nice. So I have my oldest, they're polar opposites. My mm-hmm. oldest is more of an introvert. My youngest is my mini-me. Mm-hmm. She's also high-functioning autistic. And so, okay. and she's a lefty. So it's oh. like, I'm an athlete. She's like a brainiac and, and an artist. Yeah. And, uh, but it has been cool to watch her shoot. So she has a bow mm-hmm. and she loves shooting and no shit. The same thing that happens to me when I knock an arrow, when I remember to knock an arrow and, and fire <laughs> happens to her. So it, it's cool because just from what I know with her, auti- her autistic brain is she is on all the time because she's trying to adapt to her surroundings. Her brain thinks very differently. It, you know, it, it fires off at rapid speed, but when she shoots how calm she gets, it is indescribable. So not only does it have therapeutic benefits for people who actually don't have like neurological disorders, it does Mm -hmm. the exact same thing for her brain. So I can't, recommend it enough and she loves archery absolutely loves it how did you get her started just with me doing it she she wanted to participate and so we got her hooked up with a left-handed bow and started shooting in the yard as well that's awesome I've I've got a nine-month-old here at home and so I can't wait to get her to that point one day to get her to start shooting in the backyard with me and her mom. So I'm excited to see that. That's a great thing. You don't need much space and you don't need Mm -hmm. much equipment, just the basics. You know, you could go outside and, you know, take 30 minutes to an hour and just shoot and, you know, just, just hang out and bond. I mean, it's, it's wonderful. Yeah. Big time. Tell me about with women in the outdoor industry. I think we're really starting to see, more and more women uh, starting to hunt, coming out in the outdoor industry and just really, for lack of better terms, just 
kicking ass, you know? And I love getting to see that because I've got a wife that's super interested in hunting that she started a couple years ago. And then with my daughter coming up, I just, I think it's great because it, it sets a great example for women that are wanting to get into hunting down the road. I agree. I, I think the, why we're seeing it is, you know, right now we're, we're living in a world where, how do I say this PC? <laughs> Just uh, say it. Just say it. Where a world of feminazis, right? Where women are just like, oh, it's, you know, I want to be on the same playing field without actually being on the same playing field. Um, not me. I'll work for everything that I've got. Um, and mm-hmm. I'm very proud of that. But the, the thing that I like about archery, that aside, is it puts everybody on a level playing field, right? And the yeah. only thing that separates us is our willing to practice, our willing to do it right for the right reasons, I think is um, is a big thing. And I think that's something within the, the community that I have found either you, as a woman, you get respect or you don't. If you're in it for the right reasons mm-hmm. um, and you... I don't know. You're just genuine. I think that you're going to get more respect out of the men within the community. Not that we have Mm -hmm. to earn your respect, but within each community, everybody needs to earn that respect and that, you know, those props. So for sure, what I like about it is no matter how much stronger men are or, you know, whatever their background is, is a level playing field. So you and I could go out on a mountain and shoot a 3D range and I mean, you could have a good or bad day. I can love to dry fire my bow and so, you know, but, you know, as long as you and I have practiced, you know, you and I are on a level playing field. And I think that's important because our examples to the younger generations, our kids, it's, it's not going to discourage anybody from trying this out. And that's what I love. It's there really is no differentiation other than, you know, skill you know, maintaining mm-hmm. your equipment, doing it for the right reasons. It's, you know, there's no discouragement here other than, you know, having to regroup or, you know, you just have a bad day and you need to try again the next day. So it's, it just evens it out. And I think that's one of the things I love about the archery community is just how welcoming it is to everybody. And I'm pretty, I know you saw this at Total Archery Challenge, but I felt like, yeah, there was probably a couple of guys that wore their egos a little too much, but I felt like the majority of the folks that were at each of those events, they checked their egos and left them in the parking lot before they came up the mountain. And I just saw so many people helping each other out. Uh, You know, if somebody was having a bad day on the course, it, it felt like there was four or five other people right there with them trying to figure out how to make them a better shot. Yeah. You can't get that anywhere else. And I honestly, I didn't see the ego thing, but, but honestly, I'm kind of like in my own little bubble and I really only, you know, I hung out with the people that I, you know, felt comfortable with and wanted to hang out with because I'm new within black rifle. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I'll, I'll observe for a little bit. And then once I find my people, like, you know, I start to open up a bit. So I didn't, I didn't see that. However, I'm sure that you know, people like yourself that have been in it for a little bit longer can see the egos. But as far as I'm concerned, you nailed it when you said if somebody's having a bad day, you're going to have people, you know, checking your site, check, you know, watching your, your body to make sure that your form is great. And you don't get that anywhere else, anywhere else. It's a legitimate competition where here it's just for bragging rights and more for fun. So yeah, I love it. It's yeah. And that's, it's hard to find because I know, Growing up, I know every time it seemed like you went into an archery shop or a Bass Pro Shops or wherever it might have been, it felt like there was just always this intimidation factor that Mm -hmm. people had all these big time secrets nobody wanted to share. And I feel like there's been a complete shift in that recently. That's good to hear. And I want to encourage everybody because I have a lot of people reach out to me, you know, where do I get started? Mm Mm-hmm. And honestly, the best place you could get started is at a local archery shop. You know, they're going to let you rent a bow. They're going to set you up. They're going to measure everything to your specifications. And they're wonderful people because for one, they want to keep your business, right? So if you, you know, 
keep you coming back and maintaining your equipment and everything. And it's, you know, it's just you and that person. It's not, you know, you don't have to start your archery um, relationship at a total archery challenge. That would be extremely overwhelming. So I highly recommend that you do on your own time at your own archery shop and establish that relationship. Big time, big time. Well, let's, uh, let's dive back into Black Rifle for a little bit. Okay. What, uh, do y'all have any other events that y'all are going to be coming up to this any fall or doing anything else this summer with archery or hunting or? So the total archery challenges for us, um, Snowbird was our last one. I know there's one coming up in Vermont, I think this weekend, um, mm-hmm. but we're done with total archery challenge. Um, as far as what other events we're doing, I'm not exactly sure. I was just really big into the archery challenges. And then as we have more board meetings throughout, you know, the year, I'll, I'll be back in Utah next month for a meeting um, so we can discuss some stuff. But um, I don't know what we're doing, but I can tell you that behind the scenes, the fund is always there. It's always giving back. We're looking for, you know, police departments that we can give coffee to, um, fire departments, um, veteran businesses. So the great thing about the fund is every week, Every single week, we're giving money back to a veteran-owned business, small business. That's through, pretty awesome. Yeah, and and it's not it's not something that they're going to talk about because mm-hmm. you know the people that actually are are in it. I'm just on the board and I'm a volunteer, but um, I'm allowed to brag about it, right? Because it's them. This is something that they're doing. Heck yeah! Um, and I just get to to be a part of it. But yeah, every single week they are donating up to $5,000 to a veteran owned small business. And then well, as well as, you know, people will write in or they'll contact, you know, people through Instagram and are like, Hey, you know, this, these people could really use some coffee or something. So they'll constantly send stuff. There's always shit going on behind the scenes that, you know, isn't posted about because that's, that's not what it's there for. It's not to get accolades. It's to actually can help. It's not to, you know, there is a lot of nonprofits out there. So it's really hard to decide where you want to donate your money to. Mm-hmm. I can guarantee you that if, if you were to donate to the fund or, you know, come out to a place where the fund is or Black Rifle is, your money is going to a very wonderful place that you'll be able to see with your own eyes. Um, yeah. just not all of it because that's not what it's there for. Yeah. Actions speak louder than words. Always. Every single time. I want, I want to kind of go back to your, your blood origins film. I know we're kind of going back and forth here. Mm-hmm. What was it? What was that like for you to go through that whole process of that being your first hunt, getting to film it and then showing it to all those people at total archery challenge. What was that like? It's extremely emotional. I can, I get emotional just thinking about it. Um, you know, to me, it's a very intimate experience, uh, just in my own, you know, I'm not an avid hunter, but I would assume that because of the amount of work that gets put in every single day to have a successful hunt and to, you know, kill this animal the right way, it's a very intimate thing. It's, it hurt. It's very physical. It's very emotional. Um, you know, if you don't bring anything back, you know, it's, it could be devastating. Yeah. Um, so for me, it was emotional because I feel like I wasn't successful, even though everybody's like, you know what, like, I can't tell you how many times I've come home with nothing. Mm -hmm. It, it was like me sharing myself strip naked with the, you know, entire community to say that you know, I did everything right. I, I, you know, I went out and I shot and I practiced and I had the right equipment and I took the right shot. Um, and I failed. So I don't think you did. I know that now, but not knowing what it really is like to prepare and do everything right and still come Mm. back with nothing. Sometimes for my first time, that's what it, that's what it felt like. Yeah. So now I know why it's so wonderful when people actually bring harvest home and then they share it with all of their friends and family because they're so fucking proud because it's like it doesn't happen that often. Oh, yeah. And how how wonderful is it to have, you know, that success 
and to be able to fellowship with the people that mean the most to you. It's a very intimate thing. Big time. And I think that's what drives so many people to archery is because of the challenge that it presents. Uh, and when you do harvest an animal, it's just that much more sweeter. And I just, to me, it's, it's like when I went elk hunting for the first time two years ago, I had all these high expectations because I'd seen all these YouTube videos of these dudes killing elk. I'm like, Oh, this is going to be freaking easy. I can do this. We came home, yeah. we came home empty handed and I'm actually happy that we did because I felt that had I killed something the first time, I wouldn't be as driven as I am to go back again and try and kill one now. I 100% agree. And I'm one of those people that can be annoyingly naturally good at a lot of things just because I'm an athlete. Mm -hmm. um, I'm terrible at math. And, you know, <laughs> so I'm not, not good at everything. But for me, it was, it, it definitely kept my ego in check. Not that I have an ego, but, um, the, the potential for the ego to be there. I'm like, Oh, it's my first hunt. And I already came, you know, back home with something. No. So it, mm -hmm. you know, you got to go back to the drawing board. You have to, you know, reach out to people to help you. You have to have your equipment, right. And all of that practice and everything. So yeah, like you, I think it was just, it had to be part of my process to fail first. It's not yeah. easy. No, it's not. It's not. And that's where I have this quote that I've kind of, I've lived by for the past 15 years that there's an old, older coach of mine that told me a long time ago that it's okay to fail, but failure to try is a disease. Ah, so yeah. it, and of course it was in reference to athletics back in the day that he'd rather see us give our all and fail than not try and still fail. And then Absolutely. it's just, it's just a continuing thing in your life. And that's why I think in life too, um, so many people are afraid of failure and they're afraid to go after things and they're afraid to try new things. I agree. And I, I think a part of that is because of social media, mm -hmm. honestly, because everybody puts their, you know, their highlight reel up on social media and you know, it's, um, if, if you're not trying, you're not, you're not living as far as yeah. I'm concerned, just kind of like your quote. And so I would encourage everybody, you know, to go at least, you know, try archery. You don't have to be a hunter. Like there's, there's nothing absolutely wrong with that. I didn't set out to be a hunter. Mm -hmm. And in fact, had blood origins not contacted me, I probably wouldn't be into it as much as I was, but I had such a great experience and it has led me to all of these wonderful relationships like you and, you know, Black Rifle and everybody within this community that's been so helpful, even be behind the scenes. Um, it's, you know, stop being, this is so bad, but like one of my favorite hashtags, DBAP, and it's, yeah. like, you, you like you have to grow as a person. And in order to do that, do the shit that makes you uncomfortable. Do work on what's, you know, hardest for you. Don't just sit, sit out there and say, Oh, I'm like, for me, I I'm good at handstand walks, you know, just work on handstands. No, I need to work on the other shit that I'm terrible at, which is like, you know, I'm terrible at squatting. I need to work on like my Olympic lifting. Um, so it's, yeah, I, I highly encourage everybody to do the stuff that is completely unsexy, but that will make you better at everything else. Yeah. So don't well, and I think you're you're a uh, you had a couple of Instagram posts recently that was in the sweat equity. Yeah. A lot of people don't want to do that. No, because it's it's daunting. It's you know, nobody wants to start at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Um, like I said, there's that highlight reel that everybody gets hyper focused on, but you know, if you I think you're selling yourself short when you don't don't put in that sweat equity. You know, there's a lot of good people out there that will post about that stuff, you know, um, about doing this shit every single day. Yeah. Um, and just because it's not being posted about doesn't mean that you're not working on it. So I, I think sweat equity is is awesome. I I I don't know. I love to suffer. I love to to get to the point where 
I am the one controlling my suffering. Mm -hmm. Um, cause there's enough out, you know, shit's hard enough as it is. You might as well be able to control your suffering and overcome it yourself. You're so right because there's so many people that are just afraid. I think, and like you said, it's just daunting and people don't want to do it. They see all these sexy things that people are doing on Instagram. They think it's easy, but what they don't really see is there's a lot of hard work that has to be put in behind the scenes. Absolutely. Especially when it comes to something as intricate as hunting. Oh yeah. Um, so I think, you know, there's the old quote comparison is the thief of joy. Mm -hmm. Um, you can't compare yourself to people that have been out there and doing it for years. Like, you know, Dudley, you know, first picked up a bow when he was eight or nine years old. And he's how old now? Right. I I think he's 36. So John, if you hear this, you're welcome. (laughs) Silver Fox. (laughs) Yeah. But, you know, he, he had a fantastic story on, on how he got into hunting and I won't, you know, that's his story to tell. I won't say that, but you know, this man has perfected it for years. So you can't compare yourself to him. Watching him shoot is the most frustrating thing in the world because it is perfection. Yeah. But be so humble and so kind. And you have to respect the man because he has put in the work. He did, he just didn't decide, oh, I want to be, you know, famous on social media for the way, you know, for, you know, how I'm able to shoot and hunt and be successful. It's like, that's, oh, yeah. that's what equity. Heck yeah. Well, I mean, and look at what he's doing for the sport of archery. I mean, yes, he's not just doing it to promote himself and make himself bigger. I mean, he went to a new bow company to create these bows that were more affordable for everybody. He's putting out all these free online courses. He's going out and hanging out on total archery course on his knock on course pretty much the whole day. So he can see everybody that comes through. And so if you ask me, I mean, that that's a great proponent for archery. Absolutely. And he, he, it is the exact opposite of him doing it for himself. Like he mm-hmm. is a part of every single total archery challenge and it brings in thousands and thousands of people throughout the year. So to say that it's, you know, for him, it's, it's the antithesis at that. And obviously, you know, there is, there's so much that you can get from archery that can teach you basics about hunting. You know, you have a lot more work to do, but if he wasn't such a believer in it, you know, we wouldn't have this community, I don't think. And then teaming up with Black Rifle was a smart decision on, on both of their parts, you know, Evans and, Mm -hmm. and Dudley's. So it's, you know, I don't know of a, another sport or another community that wants to get all of these people in. You know, mostly it's like a, oh, well, you know, can't sit with us kind of thing. But really the archery and the hunting community is like, you know, we got room. Come on, let's go. I know. That's, I, I love it. And that's why so many people are drawn to it. It's just so badass. It is. And I love the different elements of it. You know, we have like, you know, I'll talk about Lucas from Grizzly Forge. You know, he's, Mm-hmm. He's a bladesmith. You know, there's, you have to know how to process an animal. You know, that, that gave him an opportunity for this job. You know, Josh Smith and Montana Knife Company, you know. Yeah. Numa. Um, yeah. You know, you've got, you've got so many people, you've got the flip flop guy. So it's like, there are so many things that not only has brought business for other people, but they want to share it. They want, you know, they're so giving, they're so kind and generous and genuine. That's the biggest mm-hmm. thing is, you know, it's uh, these people really are who they say they are. And it, it's just it's intoxicating. It is. And I love it because you see it just beginning to spread across so many companies, different influencers and just all these different folks. Yeah. And it's, it's just getting started, which is kind of scary because it's only going to get bigger. I know. I felt like, you know, it had started to gain steam in 2019 before COVID. 2020 hit and you just kind of see like this this lull but you could start to see it growing at people's homes Mm -hmm. and then this year it's just like it's starting to bust out and there's no telling what it's going to be like in 2022 absolutely and i you know i hate to bring up the word covid because you know i see it all the time at work i'm kind of yeah but if if you want to think of a glass half full 
scenario, this is it. Mm -hmm. You know, COVID made everybody stay home and, you know, tolerate their family members or, you know, learn a new trade or learn a new hobby. And I think that is the reason why this has grown so much. And I'm very grateful for that. It's what brought me to archery. It's, you know, and hopefully into successful hunting here in the near future. So um, I'm always a glass half full and it, it, people make fun of me a lot because I'm always like, well, the good news is, you know, my house could be on fire. And I'm like, well, the good news is I'm a firefighter. So I could, you know, <laughs> I know how to put it out or something like that. So for me, you know, um, what this has brought into my life, the people, you know, my opportunity to serve, um, all of this is my, the good news is. So I'm grateful. You have to have that glass half full look, outlook in life. You just, you have to. You do. And it's, it's harder than it seems. But, you know, a lot of people, like, I don't know how you're so fucking positive. Like, are you really this happy all the time? And the answer is uh, a majority of the time, yes. Um, even though I, like, my shit's on fire all the time, it seems like, mm-hmm. is because I used to be a super unhappy, miserable person. Like I wouldn't joke. I wasn't sarcastic, like, because I was stressed the out all the time. I didn't know who I was. This was before I became a firefighter. And, um, I just, I didn't have any joy or purpose in my life. And so once I found that and I realized, you know, relationships do matter, my friendships matter. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, what I do in life matters. It's, I really was able to let go of the shit that I couldn't control and only focus on what I could. And what I want to control is everything positive. So, you know, I, if you were to have met me four years ago, you know, you probably wouldn't have liked me. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't (laughs) friendly. I didn't, I didn't smile as often. I wasn't as approachable. I was, yeah, I was just kind of, you know, just poisoning myself with focusing on the negative all the time. So if, um, you know, if you're, if you're wondering if, if this is who I really am, it, it truly is just because I know what it's like to have the exact opposite. And I didn't like who I was and I'm pretty even okay with who I am now. Well, and I will definitely say you're pretty awesome. And thank you. You are definitely a person of your word. Because you told me prior to tech, you're like, hey, I'm going to bring you a coffee. And I think it was Big Sky. The first thing you did, you came over and brought me and the rest of our team coffees. And yeah. so it's pretty badass. Because a lot of people, like, I feel like there's a lot of people out there that kind of hold those empty words. But you came by and you you came through. So that speaks volumes to me and our team. But uh, I want to touch on something you said a minute ago. Okay. About learning how to control what you can and let go of what you can't. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about how you were always stressed or you're unhappy. How did you get past that? How did you let go? How did you let go of the things that you couldn't control? It got overwhelmingly bad Mm -hmm. in my life. Um, A relationship that I was with, um, uh, and it just kind of spiraled out of control. And I, it, the way it made my, my mental health was, it made everything bad. I didn't want to come to work because I couldn't like work at the beginning was an escape and then it started bleeding into my work. So it's like, I, I really was at my lowest point in my life and I, realized that, well, I could lay down and die and take that into my own hands, or I, I have complete control of my situation, just change my situation. And that empowered the shit out of me. Um, so really it was, I didn't have any other choice Mm -hmm. other than to just focus on the things that I could control because the things that I couldn't were so bad, so overwhelming. Um, you know, people wouldn't believe the situation that I was in and the things that were going on in my life. And, yeah. and, and I still was happy. I, I still was holding on to that, you know, that light, that hope that it was going to get better. And finally, when I was like, you know what, I'm going to control this now, then it's like, you know, universe spoke to me. It's like, 
you know, finally, okay, we like we were telling you, you got to take control. You got to take control of what you can and let go of what you can't. And I mean, it, it sounds hokey and I'm not a granola eater, I swear it, but it's like, you know, I feel like if people would just focus on the positive, but not be naive about anything, just, you know, work on the bad shit, but really focus your energy on doing good, you know, especially yeah. to yourself, speaking good things to yourself. It's life. Life is good. And that, That's great. That's awesome to hear. It really is because I know there's a lot of people out there that, you know, they struggle with those things. Mm-hmm. They're stressed. They're anxious about things like that, that are out of their control that they try to control. I'm guilty of it. You know, I've been stressed about things that oh, way overly stressed than I should be. And the hardest part is figuring out how to let go. That's the hardest part. But I guarantee you, once you figure out how, like there's no like, I couldn't write a book to tell you how to do that. It's, mm-hmm. you know, it's individual based. But once you learn how, it's almost dangerously easy. You know, I'll freak about freak out about shit for a couple of hours and then I'm like, well, I'm done with that. Like that was exhausting. Okay. Let's, yeah. you know, let me go do something that's going to make me happy. Let me go, you know, let me go shoot or let me go talk to a friend or let me, you know, go do some, get a manicure or whatever. Cause I'm still mm-hmm. a girl. Right. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, I don't know. There's just like a breaking point it, yeah. like in anything else where you, once you learn how to, to do that, it, it is really, really easy, almost annoyingly easy. Mm-hmm. I love it when you're when you get stressed out about something, and like you're saying, you worry about it for a couple hours, and then I've gotten to the point that I'm like, wait, why the hell? What? I already forgot what I was pissed off about. Like, why am I stressed? And exactly. It's instant change. Instant change. Yeah. And you you uh, you brought something to my attention. So one of the things that has helped me more than anything is time. Mm-hmm. So you know, really the saying this too shall pass is a hundred percent true. So when I was at my lowest, um, and I left, um, you know, my situation, I thought I was never going to get over with. I was devastated. I didn't know who I was, you know, and this was recent, just a few, like a couple months ago, almost three months ago. I thought that I was never going to get back to myself, but as time went by and I was forced to work on myself and forced to focus on things. And I was, you know, if here's the situation and I'm moving along and moving along, it gets easier. So, you know, like that whole freak out for a couple of hours thing. And then you're like, fuck, was I even mad about It's That's so important. So I want to encourage people, like when you're in the shit of it, Mm -hmm. it's, it really is going to get better. And it may not be a couple hours. It may be a couple days. It may be a couple weeks, but I promise you what's on the other side. What once you take control is so worth it. Like don't, don't give up on yourself. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm talking about suicide here, you know, yeah. I don't want to beat around the bush. It's so worth it. Once you get past it. Cause I didn't think my life was going to get better. I thought like I was on autopilot. I was just trying to survive the next day. My life, Right now at 38, I feel like I'm just getting started. You're 38? I am. You don't look like it. (laughs) Thank you. 29. Yeah. Yeah. 38. I appreciate it. But it's, I feel like my life is just getting started because I know who I am. Like my tolerance for bullshit is like almost nil. And um, I'm just extremely happy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but it took me a long time. It took, it took me you know, almost two years of being in a shit situation and then, you know, working on myself and, you know, it's, you know, I'm just getting started. It was great. That's awesome. Yeah. I love to hear that. And I think, I think there's a lot of listeners that are going to hear this and be able to, it's, it's going to help them out. I know that for sure. I hope so. And I, you know, reach out to me on Instagram, like, there's something about telling a secret to a stranger that makes things so much better than like telling it to a buddy, like, Hey, I'm struggling. Cause you don't, you know, you're going through your own shit. You know, your buddy's going through their shit. It's like, mm-hmm. you don't want to, you know, pile stuff on them cause it's heavy. Yeah. Um, but strangers, like we have no emotional connection, right. Other than what you see of me on Instagram. But you know, I've kind of the same way I have built relationships on Instagram through strangers. Like I have a buddy, um, his real name is Chaz. I won't 
tell you his Instagram handle because that's like a very intimate relationship to me. And and I've told him about the shit situation I was in and he was able to give me advice and kind of pick me up when I needed it. And now like we joke that, um, you know, we're pretty much in a, in a, in a marriage, but not really being in a marriage because we know such, you know, yeah. you know, the shit things about each other and that, um, but it's, I don't know. There's something about saying something to a stranger because there's no emotional connection there. And it's almost as if you're like, you're just able to take that weight off just for a teeny second. So reach out to me. It's kind of like an unbiased opinion. Exactly. Is what, is what you're getting. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's almost more just like a confession instead of like, a you know, asking for your asking for help. It's almost just like, Oh, I need to say this instead of like, Hey, how can you help me? Just getting mm-hmm. it out, just saying it out loud helps. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, Manny, tell us where they can find you on Instagram or any other social media platforms. So I'm really only on Instagram. Um, it's Mother Dragons, M T H R underscore of Dragons, like Khaleesi, as you would guess, because I think she's yeah. a badass. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and then also, I want you guys to follow BRCC Gives, um, BRCC underscore Gives, um, and that's the Black Rifle in-house nonprofit. We're doing some great stuff. So follow that as well. Well, sweet. Well, Mandy, I really appreciate you hopping on the podcast this morning and taking the time to just sit down and talk everything for a little while. So it was awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Like I, I love doing this because I love to, you know, chat with people that I've made relationships with, but I feel like I black out. So I don't remember anything I just said. So I apologize. It's <laughs> like all over the place. I think you're wonderful. And I think that the support that you give to, you know, the nonprofit that I used to volunteer for and, you know, just your personal interaction, you know, you're another one of those people that you are who you say you are. And it's just, you know, I, I really have yet to find somebody within this community that is not that. So it's refreshing. And, you know, I wish nothing of the best for you and your company and your hunts and all of that. Well, I appreciate that. And yeah. I know, I know for sure we're going to have to do another podcast after you get your first kill. We're going to have to talk about that and, yeah. you know, I want to see some videos and stuff on social about you screaming and kicking because you're that excited. So I will be looking forward to it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I I should have hope so. (laughs) You got it. All right, Mandy. Well, I'll see you later. Thank you. We'll talk to you soon.